Hello, and welcome to our Gone Again channel. In this episode, we're exploring Southern Nevada, and we're thankful that we're able to take you along with us. We'll take the cactus jabs for you. This kind of shows you what it's like when you're going uh, across BLM and you know it's all public land and you can camp, right? Well, you can't get off the road because the berms are too high on either side. So you gotta find a place where there's a pullout and that's usually where somebody has camped before. But now you can see what it's like. You just kind of keep cruising until you find a place or not. Well, we've been traveling for miles on this dirt road it actually does that, but we came out of those mountain range right there and uh, saw this interesting pile of rocks that we want to go look at. Yeah, because we know there's petroglyphs in the area, but petroglyphs are not. Who can pass a stack of rocks like that up? Let's go over there and check it out. Well, they're a lot bigger than they appear from the road. There's actually a pretty good little shelter down in here. It looks like a very comfortable place to spend the night if you had to. It's pretty big. It's actually big enough for, you know, you have plenty of room and it's soft in there too. Well, it's just a big, beautiful pile of rocks. Still looking for petroglyphs. Oh, what have we here? Ah, oh. yeah, that's a flake or a tool, tool making. I kind of figured I'd find something like that around these rocks here. Oh, interesting. I'm not seeing any petroglyphs yet, but I've just been working my way around the perimeter here. Smaller outcropping of rocks off to the side here. Looks like a nice place to sit down and hang out. The thing in these areas is not to get excited and move too fast. <laughs> you want to give the snakes a chance to make themselves known. I went around to a nice big sheltered area in here. What the heck? Looks like a couple stones maybe stacked up here. I think so. Nothing major, but yeah, nice shelter area. It's got a pack rat uh, nest on the left side there, but this is pretty big actually. You can get several people in here. It's interesting and maybe even a little odd how these stones right in front of me are in a line. The tops of these stones are really pockmarked with deep holes and these aren't for grinding grain. Uh, these are natural holes, but they would have held water after a rain probably for several days after a rain. So this, this would be important for a Native American to know as he traveled through here. And here's another beautiful flake. 
So you know they hung out here. They thought this area was just as beautiful as we think it is. Well, Linda's been up on top. It'll be interesting to see the video that she's got. And I'm still making my way around the perimeter. It's just been fun. Whoa. Hey, our outfit is somewhere behind this rock. You can see the road over there, kinda. And we came out of those mountains over there. Panning clear around. Rick is somewhere at the bottom of this pile of rocks. We're supposed to be joining up with um, Highway 93, Great Basin Highway, somewhere out that way. There's that rock from the highway or from the road, the dirt road. It looks like a balancing rock, but it's kind of, kind of not. Let's see if I can get up there. Some kind of tin. Can't quite read it. Oh, this is the lid to a corned beef can. An old one. So somebody sat here in the shade and ate their lunch. Well, this is another nice little overnight shelter area for a uh, ancient trekker. Their artifact. <laughs> yeah. It says on it, can't make it out. O'Neill. I don't think this is an ancient artifact. Kind of a cool button, though. Almost looks like it was made out of bone, but it's not. And look who's coming out to tell me hello. Just a little pet tarantula right there. Hey, fella. There you are. Did you see anything? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see any petroglyphs, but uh, I know some place where we can go see some. You up for that? I did see a corned beef tin. I did see the lid of a corned beef tin and then a little uh, baby tarantula came out and said hello. Yeah. Now it's time for us to head back. We'll go find some petroglyphs. While I was in there, I found a couple of things like this. Now, this looks like a flake tool, but it's just made out of regular rock. This is the kind of thing they would have made, oh, if they just shot a deer or something and they needed to make something uh, on the spot, just a temporary little tool wouldn't have been something they would have carried. I saw a couple of others and I kind of passed them off as a nothing and then I see this one and that looks like a possible something. It's a, it's a thing. Well, this was definitely worth the stop. That was fun. And I need to cross the road here. I better look both ways. You know, driving along this highway reminds me of when I was a kid traveling with my family and we traveled back and forth across the United States so many times for my dad's work and 
we'd be going through these states like Nevada and Utah and down into Arizona and places like that. And me, I, I wanted to explore so bad because I was raised out in the country where I would disappear in the morning and not show up again until dinner time. I was always out. So going through places like this, I wanted to stop. <laughs> it's nice now uh, being able to do this as an adult and I can go down any road I choose and Linda and I get to do all kinds of explorations. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're just above the Paranagat Valley, uh, right at Ash Springs, Nevada. And up here, there's supposed to be petroglyphs. So um, we're gonna go look for them. Well, we're looking. There's a big deer. Oh yeah, I guess. Yep, and there's other things too on that rock. I don't know what they are. <laughs> yeah, the state put these in. There's more on this rock here in front of us. Yeah, super old and hard to make out. Well, we can see some on this rock right here. Hard to make out. They're really, really, really old. Um, there is an animal here. Looks like a deer. It's got four legs. There's numbered plaques uh, or metal stands next to these, kind of marking them. Well, this big rock in front of me is actually covered with them, but they're hard to make out. I don't know what this one is. Almost looks like some kind of centipede or something, but who knows? They might have had insects back then that we don't have today. <laughs> you know, I find it really interesting that when I was younger, they were saying, oh, the Native Americans have been in, the, in, this, in, in North America for about 12,000 years. But the things you see, and it just makes you wonder, and then the structures and everything, and then you start to find out that, oh, down in Texas, they did that dig years ago, and they went down another four feet and found another whole layer of tools and art, you know, artifacts, and said, oh, these are 18,000 years. Now they're saying, 20 plus thousand years you know they've been here a long time and and probably way longer than that maybe a million years you know they're down in um, zambia africa they just discovered the oldest man-made structure ever found 456,000 years old and it's basically it was just two logs that were notched together and the rest of the structure is gone but they can date it and they can see that it was done with by human hand and stone tools. Uh, yeah, I think mankind has been in North America for a very, very long time. Oh, this rock is covered. What are they? Well, the thing about petroglyphs and pictoglyphs and pictographs is that they're, it's hard to tell what they are. Some of them you look at them and go, well, wow, that's a vase with a, with a bunch of flowers in it. <laughs> Evidently, they liked flowers back then too. I've seen one like that. But what I'm saying is it's fun to just look at them and wonder and just trying to um, decipher what the message was. Well, these are the Ash Springs petroglyphs and you get to them by just going to the town of Ash Springs, Nevada. About uh, two tenths of a mile south of the gas station, you make a left turn on a dirt road and you gotta wind your way back. There's a couple of Ys, but it's, it's only another three tenths of a mile. Uh, it would be better if you looked it up uh, online ahead of time and you got the you see that they, there's a little map that they show you kind of how to get back in here take the left fork take the right fork you know what I mean but uh, you can get back in here and see these for yourselves 
Well, back behind me here is Paranagat Valley. Not sure I'm pronouncing it right, but back in 1890, a couple of farmers discovered gold. There's a river running through here. And that was the beginning of the Ferguson Mining Company, which got really big. And that was the start of the uh, Delamar Mine also that uh, we showed you Delamar Ghost Town. Well, we need to find a place to camp. And I've got one idea, but I don't know if the road's good enough. And then there is a campground here if the first idea fails. Well, we came down the Paranagat Valley to go to Ash Springs to see those petroglyphs. And then 10 miles south of there is this Paranagat Valley National Wildlife Reserve, and it has free camping. And uh, it gets pretty crowded here, they say. The campsites fill up pretty fast. And it's right next to the highway, so it's a little noisy. But you gotta admit, it's beautiful. Well, we started out in a beautiful campsite up in the mountains. It was peaceful and quiet up there, didn't see anybody. Toured those beautiful rocks, which are all around us here still. <laughs> Went down and saw the petroglyphs down near Ash Springs. Had a beautiful night's camp down, what's the name of that valley? Paragannet. Paragannet, I guess. <laughs> Free campsite there, that was nice. And now, we're just headed back up into the high country where it's a little cooler again, but we're glad you guys came along on this yeah, one. Yeah, you guys are great company. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are, you really are. Because we think about you all the time, all day long. Hey, thanks for coming along. See you around.